Hello everyone, welcome to the Pray Woman TV. My name is Ifan Patience Ozili, the founder and president of the Pray Woman, not the Pray Woman Group. We give all the glory to God for another opportunity to learn at His feet. And we pray that as you do, the Holy Spirit teach us himself in the name of Jesus. And we ask that the Almighty God will fill us up with His blood and help us to be doing what is good and not hear us only in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we have come to the concluding part of our series on Abigail. Looking at um, two things, we're looking at the temperament, okay, the temperament and we're looking at Napa. You know, we talked about the spiritual factor, we talked about the, the mental factor, what could be wrong with Napa? Could it be a spiritual problem? Could it be a mental problem? Or could it be his nature? So today we're looking at temperament. And we have four different types of temperament. We have um, the choleric, we have sanguine. Cholerics and sanguines are extra averted um, in nature. They're extroverts. And we also have the phlegmatic and the melancholy. Now, these two are introverted. They are introverts. They are more, um, they love to keep to themselves more. Now, cholerics and sanguines, uh, let's talk about the cholerics. Now, the cholerics are basically self-confident. These are people who are so self-confident, they believe so much in themselves, they say the things the way they are, you know, they are bossy, they are independent, they are strong-willed, they are domineering. Um, and they are direct. Okay, it's a little choleric. The choleric does not have time to um, help you arrange the words. It just comes out straight. Okay, and just say the way it is. That's a choleric. Now, we talk about a sanguine. A sanguine is also extroverted. Uh, they are constantly active. These are people who are sociable. Okay, they are optimistic. If you meet a sanguine for the first time, it will feel like you've known him for all your life. Okay, these are people who are outspoken, they are, they are easy to, to they, they make friends easily, and these are sanguines. However, sanguines have no filter, okay, they have no filter, and if they think it or feel it, they just say it. They think it, they feel it, they just say it, they do it. They don't know how to filter words, okay, they are hyperactive, they are hyperactive, which often lead to forgetfulness and the, 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 the lack of organization. They are more disorganized. These are some things. Now, what about phlegmatic and um, melancholy? Phlegmatic are easy going. They are calm. Okay? They, they, but they find it very difficult to adapt to change. They cannot make decisions on their own. They allow people to make decisions for, for them. They are not very ambitious people. Okay? They are not very ambitious. They don't have any goal they are set that they want to achieve. They just they allow life to just flow. These people are, if you, if you have a scripture, follow peace with all men. Okay? Those are phlegmatic. They believe there should be peace. They believe things should just um, happen. Life should just happen. These are phlegmatic. People are introverted. They don't like expressing themselves. They just believe things should be, life should just happen to them. Those are phlegmatic. Now, when you talk about melancholy, Melancholy are rule followers. These are good followers. We have melancholy in a group. These are people who follow the rules. They are private, they are introverted, they are suspicious. Okay, you have a melancholy in your list, in your list. Of the most the family members, they are quite suspicious. They suspect every move, they suspect everything you, you, are, you, you are doing. And it's difficult for them to form relationships. Melancholies are quite difficult uh, when it comes to forming relationships. But they have high standards, but they place the bar. So if you don't meet it, just move away. That's a melancholy for you. So we, we are we are talking about this temperament because every human being, every world must fall under one of it. Now there are primary temperament and there are secondary temperament. Uh, it's possible to be phlegmatic choleric. Okay, it's possible to have a phlegmatic sanguine. That means that you're primarily phlegmatic. That means that you are someone who is easygoing, you are calm, you are introverted, you cannot make decisions on your own, you want people to make decisions for you, 
to don't believe life and it's difficult, life just happens to you, you don't have unnecessary goals or things you want to achieve, that, that that's just your nature. Now you could be choleric, okay, secondary. That means that when you need that choleric nature, that self-confidence, that independent nature, you can pick it up. Okay? You can pick it up. Now, if you you you, you know someone, like for instance, your husband, who is choleric, there's a men who are choleric. These people are very, very self-confident, very independent, they want things to be done the way they want it to be done. They don't want anything that will just um, that will tamper what they're doing. They just want it. They're, they're so bossy, they're domineering. That's their nature. Okay? Now, they could have secondary temperaments. Okay? They could have secondary temperament. And if they do have secondary temperament, that means they can one way or the other tap into the temperament when necessary. When necessary. And that is why it's very good for you to know your temperament. So you can know what to work on. Or don't say what things you what is temperament, it does not matter. It's good to know your temperament. So you can know what to discard and what to accept into your life. You can know what to work on. And, and the older people get, the more they discard some things. Like you see an elderly man will tell you, oh, some things I, I know now, I wish I had known them like 30 years ago, I wouldn't have made this um, decision or, or I've made this costly mistake. Why? Because over time, people tend to drop some character, some behaviors. So, you are young, okay? Don't wait till 30 years' time after you've made some terrible mistake in life, after you've destroyed your marriage or you've harmed your wife or you've caused pain to your husband or children or something. Because that's oh, I wish I, I, I had dropped this behavior. Oh, I wish I had worked on myself. You can start working on yourself now. So when you see yourself and you know that this is the particular temperament you have, what are the things I need to discard? What do I need to do to make myself a better person so that I can relate to people, I can have wonderful relationships, I know who to relate with in this way or i know who to relate with in that way i know how to follow peace with all men and showing that i also follow peace with myself and i have my own peace of mind you know so may the lord help us in jesus mighty name so when we get to the discussion class on our whatsapp group i'll be telling us how to respond to people with this temperament so if you would love to join the whatsapp group i will leave it in the description box the music page join and it's strictly for women both men and women can subscribe to the channel but to join the WhatsApp group is just basically for women. We are single or married, whatever category you are welcome, as long as you are a woman. Now, we're talking about Naval, um, it's quite short. Okay? I just have a word about foundation for Naval. We have been saying a lot of things, okay? We're trying to break it down as much as the Holy Spirit has helped us. Uh, and then I know that the Almighty God has blessed us indeed in this uh, teaching. Now, Nabal, if you are Nabal, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Okay? Because your wife is a human being, and the Bible says that you should treat your wife with respect, okay? So that your prayers will not be hindered. That's first Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Treat your wife with respect. Treat your wife with honor. Honor your wife is in the word of God. If your, if your pastor has not shown you that, go and look for it. It's there. Respect your wife so that your prayers will not be hindered. I know that women have different kind of character traits. The Bible says that as Christ is the head of the church, so is man the head of a woman. What does that tell us? If you are equating Christ to man and you are equating a woman to church, a church is a combination of different people with different characteristics. That is why when you meet a woman today, she might have a particular behavior. When she's about to see her period, she's having another kind of behavior. When the period is over, she has a particular kind of behavior. A woman can switch modes. Like, because the Bible says that as Christ is the head of the church, so is man the head of the woman. So if church is equivalent to Christ and to the woman, you know you have work to do. Seriously. Okay. That's why many women have become very, very angry because of the way they are being treated and they are trying to get back at the men. But the generation of men that are here, okay, please try as much as possible to do what is right. 
because in the past, many women have been hurt. And many of these women that have been hurt, okay, have been better daughters who have told themselves that they will not be hurt the way their mothers were hurt. And they are coming full flesh, they're coming out to fight. So men, please respect your wives. Honor your wife. Okay? Love your wife. It's not too much to ask. You're shouting submission, submission, submission. You're forgotten that there's something called love. Love is patient, love is kind, love forgives, love does not keep record of evil. If you want to know how to love, give your life to Christ. That's why you have to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And lastly, remember that Nabal died. Okay? Despite everything we have said, Abigail did everything she could, okay, in her own way to save the day. Yet Nabal died. Okay? We've said a lot of things. When he died, because it touched the Lord's anointed. Don't think you are too big. Don't think you know, because you are they're exalting you in your family, you think you are equivalent to God. You are not. Behave yourself. Respect your age. Because if you mess up with the child of God, God can do with you. And it's not a joke. The word of God said that Nabal died. He died and Abigail remarried. Don't think that without you, your wife will not survive. Without you, your wife might even be greater. Because there are many King David out there looking for a kind of Abigail to put in your home, to wash the feet of their servants. Okay? <laughs> that might be funny though, but it's the truth. Okay? So, pray to God. Ask God for wisdom. It's humility to ask God to teach you how to love your wife. No matter how stubborn or how rude, it's possible to be a very rude boy stubborn way. Ask God for wisdom and pray for her. And women, if you are also having some kind of attitude, pray the Holy Spirit help you to submit and respect your husband. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for Abigail. Woo! So next time we'll be meeting, we'll be talking about um, be comparing a praying woman with the A. Not that I'm going to pray with the E we're coming up with different topics. But thank you, the Holy Spirit, help us in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. We thank you, Lord, for this um, teaching of Abigail. We thank you for the lives you've touched. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We ask, Lord Almighty, that your word will be a fruit in us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So, I come your way next time by the grace of God. I remain with fine patience as you will be. God bless you.